So what transform do we use in JPEG? Um, discrete cosine. Discrete cosine transform. Why do we use discrete cosine transform? As opposed to for the knowledge is normal. Why don't we use just discrete Fourier transform instead? You see, this is an amazing thing. That the, you get taught JPEG and signal processing in general by being served formulas. And no one tells you what were the design principles behind these formulas. And today I'm going to treat you a uh, uh, explanation uh, how JPEG works, but from a purely, I mean, we will do the math as well, but uh, from conceptual point of view, because it's a wonderful uh, example of excellent engineering. Uh, what is good engineering? Good engineering is when you make models of reality that are good enough for practical purposes but they are not too good. Because what happens if the methods are too good? What often happens? Uh, they hmm? overfitting. Overfitting. They get in just uh, uh, intractable. They become uh, uh, too complicated and expensive to implement. Uh, so the trick in engineering is to find the sweet point uh, in which what you do passes all the tests for, of practical functionality, but doesn't incur uh, unnecessary cost. And this JPEG is the most beautiful example of that. And this is what I'm going to do. So, uh, uh, and in fact, we are going to run uh, some mathematical simulations uh, either today or on Thursday. So, Everything can be done in a very conceptual way. Uh, the secret of signal processing, and about maybe uh, more than 75% of it, uh, is a simple picture. And the picture looks like this. So how do we uh, represent a vector in 3D using coordinate uh, vectors? Well, you do the following. You simply find the projection of your vector onto the first coordinate axis. Then you find projection of your vector on the second coordinate axis, right? And finally, the same on third, and you sum up the projections, right? So any vector x, in short, in a, say, at the moment we will deal in a finite dimensional uh, space, is a sum when n equals from 1 to dimensionality of the space, say this is uh, r or complex numbers to the power n. You can't use n as your sum. Sorry? You're going to sum from n equals 1 to oh, 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 thank you very much. Let's use k uh, of the projection of uh, x to the unit vector, to the kth unit vector, and then just multiplying it with that unit vector. So what does this uh, this scalar product, because this is a unit vector, is just the length of the projection. When you multiply it with a unit vector, you get, unit, uh, you get a vector whose length is uh, the projection, and you simply sum them up. Uh, for example, channel sampling formula is only this and nothing more. And 
I hope I'll have enough time to show you this uh, uh, on Thursday. Uh, so, uh, what is the most usual base in either R on N or C of N? Well, EK is simply the following vector, 0, 0, 0, and then 1, and then 0, 0, where here you have K minus 1, zeros, right? Then, obviously, any vector x will be simply a sum when k equals uh, from 1 to n. And now, what is the projection on the k vector of x? That's just its k coordinate. So, it's just xk, right, times uh, uh, EK, right, which is equal to the sum K equals from 1 to N, XK times 1, uh, sorry, times 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, and so forth, right, because when you multiply uh, XK, uh, this vector by xk, it will produce xk here, right? So this is just sum k equals from 1 to n of this vector 0, uh, 0, xk, 0, 0, and so forth. And of course, when you sum all these vectors, you will get precisely x1 up to xn, right? So this is the most usual basis, right? Now, but this is of course not the only basis, right? And in fact, maybe it is not the most uh, interesting one. So, uh, here is another basis, uh, so another basis for Cn or R to the n. So here your scalars, your vectors are tuples of complex numbers and here they are tuples of real numbers. And the basis might look a bit strange. Uh, in fact, let's first formulate it as just another basis in C to the N, because we allow complex vectors with complex coordinate and complex numbers and scalars. So FK might be the following vector. Uh, it's E to the power i, 2 pi divided by n, times k, and then uh, the whole uh, thing to the power, uh, say, uh, m, where m goes from 0 to n minus 1. <coughs> Right? What is this? Of course, this is the same as uh, um, vector e to the i 2 pi divided by n times uh, km, where m goes from 0 to n minus 1. So if you want to write it in an expanded form, when m is a 0, this is just 1. Then the next coordinate is e to the i, 2 pi divided by n times k times 1. Let's write it like this. Then e to the i, 2 pi divided by n times k times 2, all the way to e the i 
2 pi divided by n times k times n minus 1. Now, <coughs> this might look as a strange choice of a base in uh, this n-dimensional uh, space. Uh, so if you denote uh, by omega n the following magnitude, e to the i 2 pi divided by n, right, which is just equal to cosine uh, 2 pi divided by n plus i times sine 2 pi divided by n, right? This is what we saw in 3, 1, 2, 1, the primitive root of unity of order n. Then fk can be written in a simple way. fk is simply the sequence of uh, omega n to the power k times 1, times 0, sorry. Then omega n to the power k times 1, all the way to omega n to the power k times n minus 1. OK, so clearly, because this guy is complex, this will be a, com a vector with a complex a vector that belongs to c to the n. Now, let us see why on earth one would deal with such a basis. So can you move to Okay. Um, uh, before we um, uh, or, yeah, well, maybe we can actually do it now. Let's see how another way of writing the same vector, right? So consider a complex um, sinusoids, sometimes also called complex exponentials, of the form, uh, let's call them SI uh, K of time t, which is equal, um, which is equal, uh, um, cosine 2 pi over n times k times t plus i times sine 2 pi divided by n uh, times k times t, right? So real part is a cosine sinusoid, and uh, imaginary part is a sine sinusoid. What are the frequencies of these uh, two waves? Uh, well, this is the frequency this is the frequency, uh, let's call it FRK, and it's exactly the same as here. So as you, as K ranges, uh, so for K equals 0, 1, up to N minus 1. So notice as K grows, K starts with 0, when k is 0, this will be 0. Sorry, this will be uh, 0. Cosine of 0 is just 1. This will be 0. So uh, you can immediately see that si0 uh, of t is just a constant function 1. And then as k grows, these uh, oscillations become faster and faster. The first one is with frequency t pi uh, n. The last one 
will be, of course, 2 pi n times n minus 1. And now notice that this basis vector is nothing but the set of samples of these functions on integers. So we now have that uh, uh, fk is uh, equal uh, simply s i k at zero, s i k at one, all the way of s i k at n minus one. Right? Because if you substitute here the integers, uh, you will precisely get these guys. Uh, so now you can represent any vector in C to the n in this basis, which you will see it's a basis, right? But fundamentally what this will tell you is you will be decomposing, uh, uh, right? You want to represent so the goal, uh, your vector x, will be some will be linear combination lambda k uh, times uh, fk. So each of these, uh, this vector, right, is a sequence of samples of this comp of these complex sinusoids. So if you represent your vector in this basis here, right? with uh, when the gate vector is this, uh, you are essentially representing the vector as, sa as, as a samples of a sum of complex, of complex sinusoids. So you are doing spectral analysis, namely you are kind of determining which frequencies to what degree are present in the vector. Right? Are you with me 100%? So, how, once again, how do we get the basis? It's just, uh, so the basis is obtained, you take fundamental uh, primitive root of unity and take it to a power k. And then consider all powers from 0 to n minus first power of, the, uh, of this omega n to the power k. So this is just a geometric progression, right, uh, with the q equals to omega nk. But these guys can be seen as samples, right, what is this? Uh, this is, uh, so another way to write sik is, of course, e to the power i, 2 pi divided by n times k times uh, t, right? Uh, that's um, a complex sine wave, uh, right? And so now the coordinates uh, become meaningful uh, because each coordinate tells you how much of each frequency you have to take to get your signal. So this is why, um, among uh, other important issues, why this basis is uh, so useful in engineering. Okay, I'll put lecture notes uh, on the web, uh, and we will also run some mathematical simulations, so hopefully it will be clear. Okay, so now um, let us first see that this is indeed a basis, uh, and uh, in fact, uh, the best, it belongs to the family of the best possible basis. In a vector space, what are, what, what basis is better <coughs> than most other basis? So, what basis uh, do we prefer in vector spaces? Uh, orthonormal. So, what we want to 
2, we will turn this uh, C to the N into a either product or scalar product space. Uh, so what is, so we are in C to the N and we define scalar product of two vectors X and Y simply to be sum when K equals from uh, 0 to N minus 1 uh, X, K, uh, Y, K complex conjugate. Uh, right? In the real case, you don't have, of course, complex conjugation, but uh, you need it here. Um, and uh, this scalar product, it induces a norm. What is a norm? Scalar product is essentially finding, you can think of it as uh, projecting. Um, a norm of a vector is defined as a square root of the scalar product x by itself, <coughs> right? And this is, of course, a positive real because this is a square root of the sum k equals from 0 to n xk xk conjugate, which is, of course, a square root of the sum k equals from 0 to n, absolute value of uh, the coordinate xk squared. Okay. So, how to think about, so if you have two vectors, then norm of a vector x is simply the length it plays the role of the length of the vector, while a scalar product, if this vector is unit vector, if it's unit vector, then scalar product of x, y simply tells you uh, what is the value of the projection of this vector uh, to the line, so it's just the value of the projection, the length of the projection of the vector on the line defined by the other vector. So, uh, so and of course we have the fundamental property that uh, scalar product x, y is equal to norm of x times norm of y times cosine the angle in between x, y. Uh, of course, this is uh, uh, when we are in C to the N where we know what angles are. And uh, uh, so this means that the cosine of the angle between x and y is equal to scalar product x, y divided by norm of x times norm of y. Right? So, scalar product allows you to introduce two fundamental geometrical concepts, which are essentially everything what you need to do geometry. One is a length via norm, and the other is angles between vectors using this formula. Okay, so now what we are going to show with such a scalar product, <coughs> these guys are um, mutually orthogonal. They are not orthonormal uh, uh, because their norms are not one but square root n. So let's compute. Uh, the, both the norm and the scalar product of uh, uh, these vectors. So let's see, what is the norm of vector fk? Yeah? Well, according to what we see, is square root of the sum when k equals from 0 to n minus 1. And then what is the k coordinate of f? I mean, ah, now I'm abusing notation, let's call it n. Kate vector, right? 
its n coordinate is just this. So it is e to the i 2 pi divided by m times k times m times complex conjugate of this. To conjugate this, it's, one can easily see, you just put a minus here. So minus e to the 2 pi divided by n times k times m. But notice when you multiply them out, they cancel, the exponents cancel out. So this is square root <coughs> of the sum m equals from 0 to n minus 1 e to the 0, which is of course just square root m because this is 1 and you are summing up n many of them. So you get that the norm of this vector is square root m of all of them. Let's see why they are orthogonal. Uh, well, let's compute what is fk uh, multiplied by f, uh, uh, say, p. Right? Well, according to our formula, this is sum when m goes from 0 to n minus 1. Right? Now, what is the, the nth coordinate? It's e to the i, 2 pi divided by n times k, times e to the minus i, 2 pi divided by n times p. So you get that this is equal sum, m equal from 0 to n minus 1, e to the i, 2 pi divided by n times k minus p. And notice uh, times m, right? Notice this is a geometric series. Uh, so we know that uh, sum of uh, q to the m when m goes from 0 to n minus 1 is equal 1 minus q to the power n divided by 1 minus q. And in our case, we have that q is equal e to the i 2 pi divided by n uh, times k minus p. Right? So if you substitute this here, then you get that this formula produces 1 minus this to the power n e to the i 2 pi n k minus p times uh, uh, n divided by 1 minus e to the i 2 pi divided by n k minus p. And we are assuming here that uh, uh, k is not equal to p, right? Because k equals to p, we computed here. So here k is not equal to p. But notice, what is this value here on top? You have 2 pi divided by n multiplied by n. These cancel out, so you have a complete perfect integer multiple of 2 pi, which is 1. Cosine of this is 1. So this is equal 1 minus 1 plus uh, uh, 0 times i, right, divided by whatever is on the bottom, which is just uh, 0, right? 1 minus 1 is 0, so you get 0. So what is the upshot? This basis is uh, an orthonormal, orthogonal basis. And if I divide these guys by square root of n, then I get orthonormal basis, namely the basis of orthogonal vectors whose length is unit one. Yes? Uh, you're missing an m. Uh, I am missing an, that's very true. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very good. So you are following. So this is a so. Uh, so let us see in these bases uh, what representation of an arbitrary vector looks like. Okay. So let us compute. Uh, let us compute a representation of an arbitrary vector. So vector x is x projected to, now we have to project on unit vectors. So let us introduce a notation here. Um, uh, let us introduce uh, uh, vector phi m to be uh, fn divided by square root n to make it orthonormal, right? So this is equal x times projected on phi m times phi m. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. M. <coughs> no, we used to call it K, right? Uh, doesn't matter. Let's just keep uh, consistent. Uh, let's keep M for the summation variable. Uh, let's call this FK. Uh, and let's call this K. And here is K. And here is K. Right? So let's compute this. Well, according to our formula, uh, you're missing the sum as well. Uh, oh my God! Oh, k equals from zero to n minus one. Okay. Let's compute now what is x k? Uh, what is x projected? to phi k. Well, this is sum when m goes from 0 to n minus 1. Uh, nth coordinate of x, so this is just xm, time, times nth coordinate of this guy. Uh, times this vector, so what is uh, will be that? This is e to i, uh, um, and we have to complex conjugate it, right? Uh, let me let me write it uh, along, and uh, uh, this will be uh, phi eight vector project m coordinate, complex conjugate of that, right? Uh, which is equal to the sum m goes from 0 to n minus 1 of xm e to the minus i 2 pi divided by n times k times m. Uh, is the one square root. And thank you very much divided over square root of n. Okie dokie. This guy we will denote by xk hat. And of course, um, we have one value for every coordinate vector. And this sequence of uh, x hat 0, x hat 1, x hat uh, n minus 1, right, has the property that uh, x is equal to the sum n equals 0 to uh, n minus 1 
of uh, x hat m times phi m right uh, and if you uh, look at uh, um, at the kth coordinate of both sides then you get that xk is equal sum n equals from 0 to n minus 1 xm hat and here you have on the bottom square root n on the top is e to the power i 2 pi divided by m times m times k now so what are these guys these guys are nothing but the coordinates of vector x in the new basis of uh, complex harmonics they are called discrete Fourier transform of the original so this vector x hat is called DFT discrete Fourier transform of the vector x this formula here is usually called inverse Fourier transform because given these coordinates in the new basis it restores back the coordinates in the usual basis so discrete Fourier transform that in engineering books that are often obscene right is given by a formula which is just stupid beyond belief discrete Fourier transform is not a formula it's simply change of base so discrete Fourier transform of a vector with coordinates x0 up to xn minus 1 is the sequence of the coordinates of the very same vector but in the basis whose uh, vector whose uh, uh, whose uh, coordinates